sometimes uh, projects make a clean sweep uh, of the past, but more often they adapt of the existing situation by taking a, in, into account the remains in place. For all, uh, to say that uh, uh, for past societies, these remains were heritage, uh, to be preserved would be too quick a shortcut. Today, heritage conservation must record uh, to information contained uh, in the heritage itself, records uh, restored knowledge about the heritage uh, as accurately uh, as possible adapt the heritage to uh, the needs and risks of society and, uh, respect, and respect the requirement imposed by, the clim by climate change. Ok. <laughs> Très bien. Uh, C'est bon, toujours <laughs> Je peux continuer, donc. Uh, To cite just one example uh, uh, close to home, uh, we need uh, only refer to the many debates uh, that have been uh, uh, taking place on the reconstruction of Notre Dame uh, since the fire. In particular, the rebuilding of the roof structure, in addition to the choice of materials, also raises the question of the techniques uh, to be used. As uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Frédéric Epo, proposed, the use of a biosourced material worked according to traditional techniques would be a strong sign if, uh, of our error uh, in the choice of a reasoned and eco ecological management of our natural resources and of a green economy turned towards artisanal know-how. Here, we are at the earth of the question of sustainable, uh, sustainable management of cultural heritage. The second question uh, that necessarily comes uh, to my mind concerning the susta sustainable management of cultural heritage is that of knowledge. For my part, I, I always attach it in my work more importance to understanding than to conservation uh, itself. Of course, the, the two are intim intimately linked But uh, uh, I want to ins insist uh, on the fact that in order to conserve in the best possible, uh, possible uh, way, one must know and understand. Today, uh, uh, sorry, understanding involves uh, uh, modeling, uh, knowledge, and call uh, for complex tools. Today, these tools are digital and uh, uh, are used at each stage of uh, intervention on cultural heritage from data acquisition, study, interpretation, restitution, enhancement, transmission, and finally, the uh, continuation of life of the heritage. Uh, this morning, Livio De Luca talked about digital commons as a new heritage. Uh, as we will see with the, our three speakers, spatial, volumetric, semantic, and temporal digital modeling is at the same time Uh, tools for recording, analysis, uh, restitution, and preservation. It is used for study, for documentation, uh, for the transmission of knowledge uh, to all publics, and for prospective purpose for the sustainable management of heritage. The main challenge is to keep cultural heritage alive and sustainable. So, uh, without further ado, I give the floor to Ad Amita Ekbali. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the dear moderator, uh, the French Ministry of Culture and uh, other partners uh, that gave me this opportunity to present my research to all the professional and dear audiences here. I'm glad to be here in behalf of Iran. As you know, um, historical buildings are one of the most important aspects of uh, culture, cultural heritage in uh, any country. Thus, their maintenance can be crucial. We should expand their life cycle and pass them to the next generation. Uh, one of the most practical approaches for, for, present, for preserving them is adaptive reuse. Uh, but the challenge to fulfill this task is, um, I should actually, what is my, 
you please go to my other channel? Uh, okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, to fulfill this task, uh, it's important to respond to today's needs uh, alongside with preserving the authenticity and originality and integrity of the uh, building. Among all the state of art uh, techniques, today I want to speak about HBIM. Uh, that is heritage building information modeling. Uh, this selected approach is a new tool for preserving historic buildings. The method combines geometric and semantic information in a complete file that can be used interactively between uh, stakeholders and different disciplines. Uh, HBIM has uh, uh, recently and limitedly uh, be used in uh, Europe and rarely in other countries. But investigate, investigating this approach for uh, allocating a new function to a historical building is a new is a new trend actually. Uh, so, at last, planners, designers, and managers can finally uh, set a strategy and plan for adaptive use by evaluating the condition of the building and uh, its surroundings. Uh, briefly, uh, my scientific uh, objectives are identifying the potential of uh, beam platform in heritage management and adaptive views. Also, evaluating the values of uh, monuments in order to plan for a compatible new function. Uh, also evaluating the merits of adaptive views in general and in terms of sustainability. And last, uh, implementation of the HBIM approach in a contemporary building in Tehran is that case study. Adaptive views. As societies, beliefs, and needs change and uh, also population grows, uh, we uh, actually face new needs and new requirements so uh, pe uh, uh, so they start to plan for new uh, buildings um, as a result of this phenomenon many buildings lose their uh, function and uh, would be appropriate for the uh, new one uh, so in this process uh, always the valuable uh, buildings are in priority uh, when it comes to characteristic of historical buildings, uh, we are facing a huge accumulation that reflects the cultural, social, and economic uh, structure uh, for past periods. Uh, also, they have a, a strong link with their neighborhood. Uh, these values uh, survive until today, and protecting them, protecting them and uh, avoid extinction will cause regaining of them uh, for a public use. Uh, if we uh, making the required functional changes, it contributes us to reach the modern comfort level. It not only uh, retains the building and its values, uh, but also conserves the effort, skills, and dedication of the builders, uh, original builders actually. Uh, in this process, um, function obviously is the, uh, uh, actually overcomes the most uh, change. But uh, other alternation will, will be made um, like circulation or uh, a space syntax. Some uh, spaces may be added, some of them may be demolished. Uh, so it's essential to uh, undertake um, uh, accurate survey uh, of the building and its values to set an a strategy, a strategy and plan. Uh, I want to note something. Uh, the most successful projects of adaptive views are those who uh, preserve the historical character and also add some new layers uh, to the building. It makes that uh, contrast so interesting and attractive. Uh, this phenomenon is, uh, has been recommended in the number of charters and guidelines. As you can see, uh, for example, in the first sample above, uh, we have a palace that became a prison in the next generation, and now in the recent decade, uh, it became a museum uh, that, uh, as you can see, the material has a contrast with the original material and 
that looks beautiful. Uh, also, we have some uh, memories of the prisoners on the walls of this prison. Uh, the second sample is a grand house that uh, by reinforcing its ex ex structure, it became a luxurious boutique hotel. Uh, both samples are in Tehran. In terms of uh, sustainability, aca uh, academics believe that we have three pillars for sustainability, economy, uh, social, economic, social, and environmental. Uh, first of all, the time is really important. What I mean? Uh, I mean that the renovation and reuse of the building takes half or three quarter of time that is needed to uh, demolish and rebuild it, and in constructor, project, as you know, time uh, is more precious than money. But about the cost itself, uh, the cost of converting the building is generally lower because of um, some uh, structural and other elements that are existed. Uh, about environmental aspects, using the existing uh, elements uh, reduces the use of uh, new materials and as a, as, uh, and as a result, the uh, CO2 emission reduces also, uh, we have, uh, how can I say, we can conserve the embodied energy. Uh, on the other hand, we can avoid the substantial wastage from demolish that would otherwise go to landfill. Unfortunately, many suburbs are filled with the uh, demolish waste. Uh, besides, uh, social aspects are uh, inseparable from historical buildings. It provides magnificent social benefits to the society. For instance, uh, remaining the character of a, a building heritage in society, for example, you have a building in your mind from uh, your childhood in a neighborhood when you uh, when again you enter, it, you feel like more secure and uh, maybe it can guarantee the success of the project after reopening. Uh, as a result of less cost, uh, maybe uh, we can uh, offer uh, accommodation, offices, or pu uh, public visits for people with limited budgets, and that would be a social uh, benefit. Okay, my, uh, the main approach is HBIM. Uh, all you know that a building information modeling is a foundation of digital transformation uh, in the architecture, engineering, and construction a a AEC industry. Based on the intelligence, uh, the BIM integrates uh, a structured multidisciplinary data to produce a digital representation of an asset uh, across its life cycle from planning, designing, and also operation. When we add age to this BIM, it becomes uh, for historical or heritage field. Uh, the a strong uh, potential of this uh, application is the combination of geometric and semantic information together. Uh, for example, uh, Morphe uh, states, Morphe is an uh, uh, experienced researcher in this field, uh, that can HPIM uh, provide a complete survey and parametric modeling on a geometry aspect, attributes, materials, the relationship be between sub-elements, possible deformation, and changes over time. In a simple word, uh, its information model modeling is a database of the asset. Okay, uh, HBIM is suitable for the re uh, recreation of historical building buildings. When you want to create an as-built model, you can have descriptive data uh, like uh, historical documents, uh, uh, bibliographic references, photographs, and drawings. Uh, and we can use them uh, alongside with the reality-based recording data like a 3D point clouds uh, that uh, derived from laser scanning or uh, photogrammetry. Uh, we have some, um, let me show you, it doesn't go. Uh, we have some uh, software for this platform uh, like Archicad, Bentley, Edif uh, Edificious, and uh, Revit. Uh, personally, I chose Revit because it's more common and complicated. Uh, the other 
uh, merit of HBIM is that can you integrate it with other digital surveying tools. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the researcher, uh, it's not my work, the researcher uh, combined it with uh, GIS, that the GIS uh, shows, um, how can I say, depicts the uh, uh, thematic maps and with the thematic maps you can see that the deformation and cracks are on the model and you can uh, see them in a uh, complete uh, model. Uh, so uh, we understood that the, uh, this integrating can uh, let us overcome the limitations of one platform. Uh, my case study is a uh, site in, in Iran. As you know, Iran is uh, the fourth biggest country in Asia and uh, with 85 million uh, population and 2,500 and, uh, 2, years of civilization. And Tehran is the capital. This building named uh, Mofakham building has uh, two, main, uh, uh, two main blocks. The uh, first block is constructed between 1939 and 1941, and the second one, uh, Block B that is on the left side uh, is uh, constructed between 1960 and 1962. Academics in Iran believe that contemporary era has uh, started from Reza Shah, that we, uh, or Reza, uh, King Reza from Pahlavi's uh, dynasty from 1925. Uh, as you, we can observe the facade, uh, the rhythm of the uh, windows and balconies, the windows are horizontal and the balconies are somehow curved. Uh, we can understand that it is inspired by uh, the, the Western Art Deco, but the, materi but the material is brick that is a traditional and uh, local uh, material. Um, the, u the function was residential and the landlord was a well-known politician uh, that had a significant role in the Persian constitutional uh, revolution. So he is well known and it has some historical uh, values. Uh, after that, his uh, daughter dedicated this building to uh, University of Tehran. Uh, I listed some attributes and uh, uh, and how can I say, um, features of this building, uh, but I bring the most important ones for you. I uh, speak about the, I spoke about the uh, historical part, but about the location and access. It's located in a tourism crowded and historical part of uh, Tehran that has uh, good uh, public access and renovated pedestrians. Uh, it's this architecture style is repetitive in the main uh, street and uh, it has uh, valuable details. Also, uh, it's physically sound with a little damage and uh, it has extensive massive area in every uh, story uh, with direct view to the city and uh, yard. Uh, also, it's uh, originally residential, but it was uh, used as a warehouse for years. Uh, by evaluating these uh, values and uh, noticing the red ones, uh, we chose some uh, new functions uh, that finally the boutique hotel was uh, uh, accepted to be more demanding and, uh, how can I say, uh, more demanding and compatible. Okay, uh, for the survey, first of all, uh, we had uh, on-site survey with laser measures and uh, a triangle uh, method, and we uh, drew that by uh, AutoCAD. Uh, Besides, we uh, had photogrammetry uh, procedure uh, from the main facade. As you can see, uh, we captured the photos from the uh, green arrows in uh, several uh, stages, several heights, actually. Uh, I go to, um, above, um, how can I say, hydraulic uh, lifter that can access to uh, upper parts of the facade. Uh, then I imported 400, uh, picture, 400 pictures in the AGI soft metashape uh, software and by aligning the photos and calibration of the camera, uh, we reached uh, uh, we reached a point cloud uh, that can uh, be very accurate because the errors uh, in the uh, 
uh, software were below 1.5 pixel, and that means the uh, point cloud is accurate. Uh, let me pass. Uh -huh. uh, in light, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. In light of reality-based uh, recording data and converting to beam, the model has a uh, material defined, and the uh, knowledge and accuracy of the uh, operator is very important. So uh, I want to make it shorter, uh, but as you can see in the uh, in the software, we imported the drawings, also the point cloud, and we use them as uh, as a pattern to model the uh, model these buildings in detail. Uh, also, we have some uh, features of parametric models. Uh, as you can see in the wall, we have some. Uh, uh, some separate uh, layers with height, attributes, material, and thickness. Every uh, semantic information is defined. Also, for repetitive um, details, uh, we have a, we have a parametric modeling. I mean that we uh, we assign the profile and path and distance, and we can uh, modify it whenever is needed. Uh, the library of parametric objects is uh, one of the famous features of the HBIM platform because uh, they can use with their parameters in other projects if you can access uh, to the uh, public libraries of the uh, same architectural style. Uh, for pathology, we have uh, four uh, uh, methods. We can import photos and uh, have a comment in the description box and mark, like for example, I wrote it's a vandalism uh, alongside the decay because of the humidity. Also, you can link the photo and have some minimal hatch here. Uh, the more professional way is importing point clouds. When you import point clouds, uh, the, all the measures are more accurate, but you should capture uh, the a point cloud uh, specifically from that uh, decay. Uh, and uh, auto mosaic photos can be uh, practical. Uh, one of the, uh, the most important feature of this, one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> the most important feature of this uh, platform is uh, the phasing. That's very attractive. For example, the uh, historical buildings has many phases, and also the renovation is uh, the last phase uh, that can be categorized in this uh, platform uh, and can be shown in a single file. All the phases that you can see from 1939 up to today and also the proposed uh, function is completely in a single file. Just uh, we filtered uh, to what to see and what, what not to see. For example, as you can see in the left picture, the uh, uh, demolishes and adders are the additions are um, portrayed in a darker uh, color. Uh, about planning, as I, uh, as I show you, we have some uh, room tags and uh, many other uh, features to plan for this. And we can have the semantic uh, schedules to uh, know about the area counts and uh, other uh, param parameters of every uh, space. So like other uh, uh, research, we face some uh, challenges too. Uh, the first one is the literature of adaptive reuse is uh, so descriptive. That means we don't have a specific qual uh, quantitative method for evaluation and decision, decision making. So we should uh, evaluate them case by case for the most compatible new functions. Also, the uh, photogrammetry requires a special equipment like hydraulic uh, lifter or drone, and uh, somewhere like Tehran uh, flying a drone is uh, completely banned. Uh, data processing needs a strong systems, and also um, the, uh, the software is designed for new buildings, not the historical ones. Uh, the transferring point clouds to tri a parametric model is semi-automated. Uh, it's not completely automatic. Because of that, it would be a challenge. Also, the researchers who are interested in this field can um, work on 
these topics like uh, con uh, to like making a contemporary parametric web database uh, or even further use VR AR optimizing the energy efficiency in this same platform or annexing the uh, structural uh, uh, installations and fixture to the existing file and if they have more complex geometries the rhino beam would be better uh, option uh, and thank you sorry to be so long <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Amita. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, uh, I give the floor to Emmanuel Dimitrescu. Uh, you are you are online, Emmanuel, and uh, uh, we need to shift with the next poem point. And. Uh, I, I have the. Uh, I have the main of the um, of your of your slide of your slide. So you 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 talk me when you want to change. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you for this invitation. I'm very happy to be here. It's a very good, interesting panel session. So um, I will introduce you uh, the former representation of uh, heterogeneous data for interoperability and collaborative vehicle reconstruction in cultural heritage. A complex and long <laughs> title for a simple aspect um, that I want to tell uh, you to the audience through a case study, the case study of the Roman amphitheater of Catania. I'm here in the behalf of a bigger team of researchers, namely from uh, uh, Catania, from Lecce and from Rome. We are working together inside um, CNR ESPC, this is the Institute for Science for uh, Heritage Science. The starting point of this project uh, is the result of another open city project uh, that was uh, next, please. And starting the video, please. Uh, that was uh, um... Thank you. It was a project uh, of uh, virtual reconstruction of the big uh, uh, theater of the Roman times uh, in Catania. This reconstruction uh, was made uh, from uh, mm, fragmental uh, remains, from the remains of the um, theater itself and from literary sources, uh, pattern and so on. Uh, the, this is the theater as it is uh, nowadays. Um, during the project, they made, uh, the colleagues made uh, a digital replica of the theater and uh, a first reconstruction in a very simple and schematic way and uh, a final version a sort of representation model for the big, the big audience and for a computer graphic video so thank you next unfortunately uh, even if the result of the process was excellent uh, we dramatically were losing some information. Uh, the scientific narrative was lost. What does it mean? Um, all the processes involved in the creation of the data set, but not only this, also all the files in between. We have the raw data uh, at the starting point, so the photos, the flutter scanner, and so on and so forth, and uh, a digital output in the end, a computer graphic video. But all the files in between were lost or not complete, archived in, on on uh, on um, on open platform. Let's say more than that, the scientific content creation, the data, the metadata, and the paradata. So how and what we use to make the reconstruction was lost in the end. So we have the publication, but all the data are not correctly uh, there. Next, data. Um, 
a lot of data, very different, uh, very heterogeneous from external sources, point clouds, reality-based models, uh, source-based models, derived by dimensional blueprints, uh, rendered images, photogrammetic projects, a uh, lot, plenty of files, uh, and we needed uh, to start from uh, an open point of view next. Applying the fairness principles to all the phases of the reconstruction workflow. So, first of all, we um, freed all the open data, all the data to open data formats from Cinema 4D to Blender. We tried to connect data through a knowledge graph using the extended matrix uh, approach. And we, dis we tried a dissemination project through uh, the extended matrix tools, um, namely the extended matrix virtual inspection query. That is a tool uh, you can use to publish online, not only the 3D models, but also all the information regarding the construction itself, formalized by the extended matrix uh, uh, data model. Uh, we connected uh, several platforms for this call. Atom3 is a framework, uh, of open source framework to publish, to create uh, rich web apps for the online dissemination, extended matrix, and some tools from the IDI world. Uh, from the Deutsche Archaeological Institute that was uh, uh, our partner inside the SOC uh, um, Open Cloud uh, pro European project. And last uh, is the mapping of the extended matrix to Cydox CRM in collaboration with uh, um, Elisabetta Caterina Giovannini from the Polytechnic of Turin. Next. The extended matrix uh, um, uh, has uh, two levels. The core language, this is a formal language to, um, to annotate all the processes of reconstruction, uh, that is nowadays based on Blender and uh, on a graph editor, this yet yeah, a free graph editor multi platform, and the MVP itself, that is this web, web app based on Atom Tree. Uh, five steps. Uh, the data collection on the site, the data management and analysis, uh, the second step, where the 3D models and all the information regarding the stratigraphic reading of the reality, all the te temporal aspect of all the features uh, recorded on, on the field are combined. Uh, a third step with the implementation for, and the virtual reconstruction, we made a, a first virtual reconstruction just uh, using a solid, um, a solid representation with uh, a color schema that is able to um, communicate uh, the likelihood uh, an object um, was existed in the past. So a call for uh, the reliability of the existence of the elements. Uh, the representation model, the fourth step, uh, and is uh, the starting point for us in this case, and uh, the publication and dissemination of, of the prod of the digital asset and all the, the paradata behind it next. Uh, please, can you play the video? Thank you so much. This is an, the iterative uh, way to work. Inside Blender, we create the proxies that are the volumes that are able to describe, to highlight portions of the model. In this case, the basement of the Shena of the theater. And after uh, defining this element inside the space, uh, we just put drag and drop another um, action, stratigraphic action inside the graph database, made in YED, adding just a description and that quick reload in, in, frag, in seconds, we have everything inside the, the 3D visualization in Blender. And we have all the information regarding the time, the description, the relationship through, with all the other elements inside the scene. So it's a, an iterative process uh, that can be done by, just by one operator, one one uh, a researcher or a group of a team of researchers uh, using a cloud uh, approach. Uh, the file, the GraphML files uh, with all the information are very um, simple to be uh, sent on, you know, on a cloud uh, platform because they are just a few kilobytes. So it's a very, very quick way to interact. Uh, you can, we can add not only the description of what we have now at Catania and the theater the remains, but also the reconstructive process, the elements um, that we think that were there 
in Roman times. So uh, it's possible to add also the, the virtual stratigraphy. So the columns in, red, in green in this case. Next. So um, we add not only what we have on the site, not only what we think that was in likelihood in the past, but also all the sources we use and they are integrated inside the, the graph, the knowledge, the knowledge graph. Next. Um, the, the last nodes, the document node with the objective data can be populated with also with URL. So um, a link to another um, element inside, in this case, inside the IDI object uh, from Arachne. This is the project uh, of the Deutsche Archaeological Institute. So it's super easy to interact with other platforms just by sending an API request. Next. And finally, the publication online uh, with the MVIC tool. Uh, the MVIC tool is the, the, a web app uh, based on the open source framework Atom, um, developed by my colleague uh, Bruno Fanini at the CNR. And uh, it is in, it meant to embrace the modern web standards. It's a cross device presentation feature. Um, it has the possibility to deploy on mobile devices, desktop PC, laptop, uh, museum kiosks, head mounted display and so on and so forth. So just creating one scenario, you are able to, in, to deploy it in several uh, um, situations. Describing, describing uh, and showing not only the 3D space, but also a 4D space surfing during the timeline. Next. Um, in our case study, on the shock case study, um, we used, uh, um, we developed a lot of code for the project, for the European project itself, and um, creating also a tool for the, for the exploration and the query of all the elements, the semantic elements inside the, scene, the scenario. Next. And please, press play for the MV in the having moving cross space uh, box. Thank you so much. So uh, MVIC um, allows to go uh, to um, explore the space, uh, the site, and uh, um, collecting information um, overing over the, uh, the proxies we already created, uh, retrieving all the relevant information. Um, it can be used to explore in, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the remains we have from the laser scanner. And everything is uh, um, created um, on the fly from the Blender um, 3D extended matrix application. With an exporter, it is possible to create this scenario uh, in multiple epochs. Here we are at um, Porta Marina at uh, Ostia. Uh, where we can have the first person navigation, uh, also with the head mounted display, actually. And uh, um, there is also the possibility to move through the time. So uh, it is a sort of timeline where you can just click and turn it on and turn it off all the epochs. What is um, interesting for us is that uh, all the scenario you, you can see is created by the graph database uh, that is made by the researcher. So in other words, uh, you draw a graph database with all the information and uh, um, Extended Matrix uh, Virtual Inspection Query creates a 3D scenario with all the assets around and using the graph database as a um, scene descriptor. So you, you, uh, this, with this language, it is possible uh, to uh, that uh, the, the researchers write down their uh, um, hypothesis and their their, uh, um, their scenario, and uh, the the service, the online service, is able to build a um, virtual scenario from this language. So it's, it is a sort of language between human and computer interaction. So this is the thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for your presentation. So now, uh, is uh, Elena, are you here? Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, so we shift with the next uh, PowerPoint, please. Yes. Yes. Oh. It's coming. It's still the, the previous uh, presentation. OK, great. So uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, thanks for the kind invitation in this so prestigious event facing important critical issues. I'm an Italian architect I'm working as a, as a researcher in, at the Institute of Cultural Heritage Science of the National Council of Research of Italy. And today I will speak about uh, uh, the DIP project, BIM for energy efficiency in the public sector, as a successful uh, case able to enhance the capacity of public local administration to design and realize innovative energy environmental improvement on historical public building throughout a multidisciplinary and integrated digital approach. Next, please. So these are the topics I will uh, speak about, the definition of the context, the challenges of the project, the Italian part and the partner case studies and the main results of the, of the project. Next, please. The project is financed by the European program ENI CBC Med, which is the largest cross-border initiative implemented under the umbrella of the European neighbor instrument uh, the objective of this, uh, of this tool are the consolidation of the relationship between bordering countries, enhancing social and economic development also throughout environmental ch challenges. That is the priority of the big project. Please the next. The consortium is made up of eight partners of seven countries of the Med area, three European, Italy, which is the, the leader with the I, uh, IFPC, uh, Oceanair, Cyprus, Spain, and four non-European, Lebanon, Palestine, Egypt, and Jordan. So in this way, we could test uh, emerging technologies in eight different countries to demonstrate its scalability to the entire stock of the Mediterranean area. Next. Uh, the project tackles very many issues and challenges. The late motive is to approach the energy efficiency of historical public heritage by the use of strong digitalization uh, of design and decision support tools. The framework, the context of the project. Uh, despite the European Union was an early mover on the climate change adaptation and mitigation policies, but still a coordinated action on built heritage is lacking. But under the momentum we hear about this uh, this morning of the European Green Deal, the Climate Heritage Network led by Europa Nostra have recently published the European Cultural Heritage Green Paper, in which heritage is finally framed in its dimension as a key resource and driver for fights against climate change. Next, uh, sorry, I, <laughs> this was the right uh, slide for the previous speech. Next, please. Uh, so why the choice of BIM? Building, we, we heard about the colleague before, building heritage uh, information modeling represents one of the most interesting lines of research for the digital management of the knowledge that always has been produced during the conservation process of architectural but also. Uh, archaeological heritage. Next, please. As well as the building performance simulations that allow the study and of optimization of energy performance in an interrelated way with the creation of a behavioral model of an historical manufacture and of all its components, starting from the envelope, then going to technical building system, and also the occupant behavior. The next, please. Like BIM, building performance simulation involves a simulative approach, but in a different way. BPS can be attributed to the category of non-destructive analysis, because they are particularly interesting tools to support the conservation process of historical buildings. Next, please. 
Then the fourth theme is the interoperability between the two simulation environments, HBeam and BPS. Although the HB model already contains a large amount of data, saving time and cost by reducing the risk of errors, but the transfer between these uh, uh, systems are still not very efficient, especially in historic buildings. The transfer takes place mainly throughout two open file formats, uh, the Industry Foundation Class IPC standard that is developed and supported by the Building Smart International Organization, and the Green Building Extensible Markup Languages 3D XML. Next, please. And uh, a, a, a very powerful tool, not digital, but uh, analogical, is, uh, uh, is the energy uh, performance contract, uh, with which we support the public administration uh, in order to involve also private funding by the ESCO companies uh, the, the next, please. This diagram represents the workflow of the B project and underlines so the centrality of the BIM platform for a series of surveys, analysis, and simulations necessary to develop design solutions. This is the next, please. This is the Italian case study, Palazzo Maffei Borghese, at least building on um, the story of the, in the historical renaissance center of Rome. It is owned by the state property uh, agency and currently the seat of the state advocacy. I think there is a little problem of uh, coordination the slides because in another... Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, next, please. The first acti uh, activity regarded the historical and architectural analysis that is essential for the knowledge of the building and also starting point for other in deep analysis. Next, please. The geometric survey of the building was created by integrating different technologies uh, for the outdoor, the terrestrial of the scanner and photogrammetry uh, was used uh, and for in indoor, the SLAM technology that means simultaneous localization and mapping that is particularly suitable for the surveys of interiors of a huge building due to its rapidity of acquisition. Next, please. Photogrammetry allows and facilitates the conservation state analysis, including the description of materials and the decay and deterioration partners. Next, partner. Next please. That you can see here represented in thematic maps. Next, please. Then we perform a set of energy and environmental analysis, starting from thermographic survey with the aim of get information of the external and internal walls of the buildings. This was uh, uh, the basis for the identification of wall stratigraphy that was also combined with the consultation of traditional architectural manuals. The thermographic analysis have allowed also identify more recent intervention or transformation underground over the time, as well as conservation problems such as thermal bridge, capillary rise of water or humidity, degradation in the internal layers. Next, please. Then for uh, an, op uh, an optimizing climbing of the positioning of uh, the next measurement uh, that are the heat heat flux meters analysis, we perform an additional numerical uh, simulation of the sunshine hours during the winter months. For the simulation, we use the combination of a Rhino software with the software and Lady Back and env Environment Analysis plugin. Next, please. The, this analysis made possible to identify the measurement points for the thermofusimetrics analysis. Next, please. At the same time, we also carried out the analysis of the indoor micro microclimate, providing useful data for the calibration of the building's dynamic simulation model. Next, please. The next step was the creation of the heritage, uh, energy efficiency HBIM HBIM model, that is a centralized repo repository to optimize the management of the large amount of information derived from the different analysis. Next, please. 
then with the BIP consortium, we perform a feasibility study on the interoperability between the different software. Each partner has chosen different combination depending on the context of the country, on the regulatory point of view, and of the knowledge and skill they have. Next, please. The transition between the two simulation systems, BIM and BPS, includes verifying the interoperability. Next, please. Starting from uh, testing, uh, and we start for testing a portion of the case studies representative of all the specific issues. Uh, next, please. Uh, this video describes the environmental and energy simulation process applied. The calculation made and chosen for the Italian case study was a simplified dynamic calculation, highly recommended for historical in the Mediterranean area, as they allow to take into account the complex behavior of the heritage, for example, the massive behavior, and better address summer condition. The software chosen is Thermolog Biological Soft, uh, uh, as it was one of the first in Italy to fully integrate the simplified dynamic calculation method. Next, please. The results of this analysis and simulation led to the definition of a performance-based design workflow that considered the main criteria of compatibility with the heritage significance of the building, uh, of the efficiency and economic and environmental sustainability in order to obtain the most efficient retrofit solutions. So here is the, the intervention, uh, the solution for the Palazzo Mattai Borghese. I will briefly sh show the other part of the case studies. In Cyprus, the British Cavalry Club, a list building rich of heritage significance that will host the new Ford Museum in Nicosia. The Cyprus partner used the design builder that is a user-friendly modeling environment for energy plus software tool developed, developed to ease the, uh, the building simulation process. Next, please. Ah, uh, sorry, <laughs> next. I forgot to tell you next. Next again. Okay, and next, next. This is the Spanish case study, Palacio de, la, de Calatayud in Valencia. Next, please. Uh, the activity in Jordan included the study of uh, the Alcarac Municipality Guest House, a municipal building that, like most of the Jordan buildings, regarding the energy efficiency and thermal comfort, have a very poor performance. Next, please. And these are the results of the scenario simulation. Uh, the project is considered the first of its kind in Jordan regarding the objective and outcome. And throughout this project, we have produced the first ever officially signed BIM execution plan in Jordan. Next, please. And you need to conclude, please. Yes, uh, we are really at the end. I calculated the 30 minutes, so I should be on time. Uh, in Egypt, we have two case studies. Both are in the old city center of Alexandria. Here we can see the Corday building. Uh, the process was from another scan of survey to BIM modeling till energy simulation. Next, please. The Horaya Center for Creativity. Also here, a scan to beam and a Revit uh, uh, to design build model process were performed. And uh, I will just uh, uh, summarize that the main energy innovation uh, measures were from passive measures, mainly from the thermal insulation, and active measures uh, with the replacement of all heating and air conditioning equipment. Regarding the implementation of renewable energy sources, many of the partners have adopted for the installation of photovoltaic panels on the roof. In some cases, using them as the whore for social activities. Next, uh, the Lebanon deal with two case study, the Rashid Karami Cultural Center in Tripoli, the municipality of Tripoli. And this is the Palestinian case study, so the Marcos Nassar Palace. The Center of Cultural Heritage Preservation, a big partner, has a great heritage skill, but they had never dealt with uh, the issue of energy efficiency or BIM. So they acquired experience and skill during the, during the lifetime of the project. Next, please. 
And so in conclusion, I can say that the B project uh, main result was the establishment of a common framework among the partners uh, to set up and harmonize the project workflow depending on local specificities. Uh, furthermore, we have not only reached, but even exceeded the performance indicator that the program requests in terms of car carbon dioxide, uh, kilowatts of renewable energies uh, produced and self-consumed. So now we are supporting the public administration, building owners and managers in the renovation project in the APC implementation phase, helping them to write and sign the correct and more suitable contract and efficient ESCO. Next and last, and thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Elena. So uh, I think we have no, no more time for our question. Uh, I, I have many, <laughs> I have a lot of questions, but I, I send it uh, uh, before uh, yesterday or before <laughs> I had the three speakers so we can, uh, we can uh, uh, continue the, the discussion uh, uh, between uh, us. Uh, but maybe uh, if I can resume just uh, on uh, one one uh, one question for you uh, three for you you of three, um, it's not simple question. But uh, which which kind of uh, relation you you can make in one sentence, one short sentence, <laughs> uh, between uh, uh, between the the knowledge, the complex city of the knowledge of the past obje object from from heritage. Uh, from cultural heritage, uh, the um, and the um, complex tools to manage this uh, complexity of uh, of knowledge, and uh, so on. Uh, the the future of heritage with the the challenge on the on this heritage. Yes, uh, you mean this? Uh, we are searching for the solution. Yeah, you uh, want me to present a solution, something like that, if you. Um, Okay, uh, <laughs> as you ask uh, uh, complexity, uh, we need uh, some complex uh, database. As I uh, work yeah. in uh, contemporary architecture, the platform that I uh, was used was enough because every element and sub-elements has its own uh, database and descriptions. But if it uh, wants to be uh, uh, com more complex, attributes like uh, other uh, historical buildings, uh, we should uh, continue with some uh, hierarch hierarchy uh, platforms like Protege or something like that. Emmanuel, maybe? Emmanuel, you are here? No? Oh, so, sorry, uh, Emmanuel, maybe uh, you can, uh, you can uh, you have one sentence of this, uh, this uh, thematics? About the data structure regarding why we develop this kind of approach. Well, thank, th thank you. And Elena? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think that uh, intervention or built editors, in my case, must deal with the higher complexity. So uh, built editors can be considered also the stress test for advanced technologies to demonstrate uh, their full scalability to the entire industry. So uh, it, I think it is fundamental resource for the climate change also using these, uh, these uh, very, very powerful uh, tools, if I well understand your, your question. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, but we have no time for exchange with the, the, the room here. Uh, I think it's time to close. Don't thank you. So thank you very much to uh, our three speakers today. And uh, I, we give the place for the next uh, round table. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.